Welcome back to today's live Level Up Conversation. Whether you're tuning in live with me today or catching me on replay, I'm so grateful that you're here with me. Happy Tuesday. And enjoy those of you joining me in real time, happy, you know, happy Tuesday. I hope that you had a great spring break. Well, for those of you who did get a spring break, I hope you enjoyed your spring break because we are back to Level Up today. Welcome to Level Up with Winnie Sun. Market updates. Speed round. Award winning financial pro. And now, get ready. I present to you Level Up with Winnie Sun. Hello, friends, and welcome to Level Up Live. I hope that you're having an incredible week so far. I'm Winnie Sun, your host and award winning financial pro. Forbes contributor and a CNBC council member. I'm so excited that we're here today. You know, I, I took a few weeks off, not off work, just off live streaming, just because we had so much to catch up on. We're deep in tax season. It's just busy, 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 busy. And of course, I wanted to take a few days off to hang out with the family. My kids, you know, want to take a few days off for spring break. That was really, really necessary. Let me tell you, I'm excited to be back with all of you today. Gotta say, it's not a show without CrossX Fighter. I see Joshua joining us on YouTube li uh, Live. What a treat to have you back with me today as well. Let's start, for those of you who watch the show, you know how we start. We like to talk about how the market closed. Let's start with that, right? The Dow closed up, positive territory up, positive, no, positive territory up 98 points today. NASDAQ and foreign chain down 52 points. S&P 500 down less than one point. So, you know, it's one of those days where there's been days like this. We wish there were better days, but it's one of those days. But for those of you who've been following me on social, you may have known I have had a very, very busy day today. And let me tell you, it wasn't just busy. It was actually one of my most favorite days. It's when I look forward to pretty much all year long. For those of you who have been following me, you know that I love my friends at CNBC. And today I was joined by, or I should say, it was hosted by my friend Sharon Epperson and many other friends at CNBC and amazing leaders in the financial space and the mental health space all coming together to talk about women and wealth. This was the, this is your annual big CNBC Women and Wealth event. It comes around pretty much every April. And for those of you who didn't know, April is actually Financial Literacy Week. So this is a big week, a lot of stuff happening. Thousands of participants, in fact, joined us from all over the world. I saw guests, I saw audience members coming from the UK, coming from Japan, people coming in, talking, wanting to learn more about leveling up their own financial situation, trying to learn from experts, getting some information, a lot of personal, like very personalized questions, which I thought was really refreshing because so many times you do these sort of events and this was a virtual event. This was a completely free event, by the way. I, I got to mention that too. I love how CNBC does this. They do a lot of great, very educational, high-level speakers. Um, usually, they're all free. So you just have to register. You get a link. You jump right in. You get to ask questions. You get to talk to people. I guess you get to talk to people like me. And many others ask questions. We had questions about people and their job career, Talking, asking questions about how to teach your kids about money, asking questions about taxes, asking questions about how to negotiate for how higher salary at their work. I mean, it was just so many things. We even had an incredible speaker um, come in from a WMA, uh, WNBA player talking about how to ask for more money and that, that, you know, sort of pay discrepancy between males and females. It was incredible. In fact, for those of you who, if you're listening to me talk about this and you're like, oh, oh goodness, Winnie, I should have, I should have actually participated. I should have heard. Don't worry. I'm actually going to share a replay link for all of you because this was pretty cool. It was a really, really cool event. Um, and for those of you, you know, who, 
are always looking to learn more about personal finance and maybe things about how to improve your business and whatnot. They're actually coming up there. It's a small business event that will also be virtual, also be free that you can register for very soon. And that's coming up pretty, pretty soon, I think next month. So I'll make sure if you follow me on social to share that as that gets closer uh, to fruition. But yeah, it was such a cool event. I loved it. Susie um, Orman spoke. I spoke, Alexa um, Carter spoke, so many incredible people. So yes, please do not forget to like this stream. Of course, follow me so I can make sure to share that with you. And actually what I'll do is because I do think this is very helpful. And I know many of you who watch um, work at small smaller companies or even own a small business, I'm going to make sure to include the small business uh, event link in a future show as well. Now, speaking of all things CNBC, there was actually a recent CNBC Your Money Financial Confidence Survey that was conducted. And Sharon had mentioned this a little bit at the conference today, but I thought it was something that we should sort of talk about uh, live on the show. And that is that 70% of Americans have said that they are so stressed, or maybe it's not so stressed, but they are definitely stressed about their personal finances these days. I thought that, num that number was actually one of the biggest numbers I've seen in what, 20 plus years in the financial industry. And so I'm curious to see how you feel. How Do you feel more stressed about your finances? In fact, the survey also showed that women feel more stressed than men. So I'm curious to see if you feel also stressed about your finances. I mean, being someone that consults and works with people of all walks of life on their financial affairs, right? I have been hearing this more so than ever. You know, certainly things have gotten much more expensive in the last few years, you know, AKA inflation. And we do know the Fed continues to increase interest rates, by the way, that definitely doesn't help with our stress. We got to say, right, every time the Fed increases interest rates, we see that as a reminder, once again, that inflation is still record high. And of course, not all of us have just a lot of cash sitting at the banks. So even though increases in interest rates could mean, does mean that your cash could earn more if you're in a savings account or a CD or, you know, FDIC insured CD or something like that. But nonetheless, the stress is real. So like, how do you feel about that? And by the way, want to say a quick hello and welcome to Sadiq. Welcome back, Sadiq. I know you, we've been gone for a few weeks. It's great to have you back, Sadiq, on YouTube. Like this, thanks so much for joining us. But yeah, this is what they're saying. They're saying we have seen increases in financial stress ever since the pandemic, which began March of 2022, or not 2020, actually, I should say. March of 2020, I can't believe Time is flying. But yeah, because of the pandemic, it just seems like things have just gotten more and more exhausting. And so that was part of the discussion and talking about how to deal with that. How do you deal with financial stress? How do you feel about financial uh, anxiety? And what are some things that you can do to prevent, you know, sort of these negative thoughts in your mind? So that was one of the big topics of this women uh, and money event. So if you haven't seen it yet, or you weren't able to join us live, I'm definitely sharing uh, the link for you so you can check that out. Lindsay Brian Pavin, amazing. She's a certified financial therapist. She talks about survival mode and just being overwhelmed about the financial situation and what you can do. And the reason why that's so important and what I really want to talk about that too is because today, in fact, the International Monetary Fund or the IMF, for short, released its latest World Economic Outlook report. Now, this is a really big report. This is takes sort of a global snapshot of where we are sitting financially, and it kind of gives us some like Easter eggs and some planning moments of what we should be looking forward to in the next year and, of course, the next five years, and whether or not the U.S. here, if we're going to be going into a recession. Now, I wish I had good news because just from that comment alone, you probably know what I'm going to be telling you next. But basically what they're saying is from five years from now, the global growth outlook isn't looking to be too great. They're expected to be about a 3% of, of growth globally, which is the lowest medium term forecast that the IMF uh, World Economic Outlook Report has made since 1990. 
Now, some of you watching may not even have been born in 1990. That's so great. That's how long this has been. So this is not a good thing. So basically, because of what you saw with the pandemic, right? Um, and also the growth rate, not only here in the United States, but globally, and factoring in things like labor force growth, geopolitical you know, uncertainty. Let's talk about that, right? Russia and Ukraine, what's happening with China and Taiwan and other parts of the world. This is all adding up to, to more concerns financially. So the question is, is a recession coming? And you're seeing a lot of that in the news today. You're seeing a lot in the financial news of, you know, actually I pushed out an article just uh, recently on Forbes about how to plan and during, during a recession. So if you haven't seen that, you definitely should check it out. But more importantly, it's not so much if a recession is coming. My answer is this, is when a recession is coming and are you prepared for that? So I don't have the answer for you today because I don't want to go into too deep on that point, but I want you to think about that and remember that we talked about that on today's show. It is not that when a recession is coming, or if it's going to come, it's when it's going to come, because it is going to come at some point and you should be prepared. And the IMF report today was actually pretty sobering for someone like myself, who is a financial professional. I read through it and I was like, Ugh, these are things that we're going to have to work through. And in fact, today's investor is so much different than investing just 10, 20 years ago. Things have changed quite a bit. So things to pay attention to, definitely take a look at where you're standing. And those of you who are filing taxes, right? If you still have that tax filing deadline in April, many parts of the country, because of natural disasters, including here in California, some areas we've actually had an extension of tax filing dates. But if you have to file um, right around mid-April here, you know, it's crunch time, but don't forget that you can still make that 2022 IRA or Roth era contribution if you haven't done so already um, and you, you want to do so before you file your taxes. Okay. Really important. Now, last story of today. There's more. This week we have a lot to discuss, but last story just for today, I thought I would share with you something. This is sort of this one of those teaching moments, but we're going to have a character that I think all of you are familiar with to use for this teaching moment. And it's the one and only Elon Musk. Elon Musk, Twitter, you know the story there. If you've been following him on Twitter or just following people making comments about him on Twitter, you know, the last week, let me just say, I don't really want to go there too much on what he's been sharing on Twitter because I really it just, it just didn't make me too happy. And if, if you've seen it, you probably know what I'm talking about. But anyhow, so there's an, a lo yet another lawsuit, another lawsuit. Yes, in the lawsuit that has been filed against Twitter's, uh, against uh, Elon Musk and Twitter. And this is filed by, believe it or not, Twitter's former CEO, Prague Agra. I think I said that right. Hopefully I did. He's filing a lawsuit against Elon Musk now, new Twitter. Elon Musk said it yesterday that he posted that he was getting rid of the W in the word Twitter. So I don't know. Anyhow, I know very, very disturbing, but it, it, it is what it is. But anyhow, I thought this was a very important teaching moment. So why are they suing the uh, former, uh, the former CEO of Twitter, as well as the former, I believe, the chief legal officer of CEO and the former chief financial officer? So C. F O C. So they are, these three individuals are all suing Twitter. And why is that? They are saying, well, they have some unreimbursed business expenses that Twitter never reimbursed them for before they were fired. They were let go from Twitter, as you know, so they no longer work there, but they have expenses that exceed a million dollars that were never reimbursed. So I share this with you because these were expenses that were incurred, legal expenses, but the inquiry by the U.S. SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, in 2022, and talking about another lawsuit and, uh, and legal fees that were incurred during a hearing before the House Committee on Oversight and Accountability, which happened earlier this year. So a lot of legal fees never got reimbursed. Then they get laid off, so they didn't, you know, they were no longer paid anymore, but they were just pushed out. So I want to share this with you because it's very important. You might not have legal fees that you incurred 
representing your company. But if you have other expenses, make sure as an employee to get your expenses uh, reimbursed promptly and quickly. If it's a receipt you need to submit, make sure you do so before you get let go. The sooner, the better. I think that's a lesson that we can take from this story. I don't know. There's not a lot of positivity in this story. So I wish I had more good news for you, but we'll take it as a learning lesson, right? If you work at a company, if you own a company, make sure that the accounting is in line, make sure you get reimbursed and make sure things are accounted for. Get that to your accounting department, get that taken care of before you step out of your company. So that's it. But we got more for you tomorrow. So definitely come back. We'll have more to share with you tomorrow on the show. And I believe we have a very big tweet chat tomorrow scheduled as well. So if you're around on social media, join us tomorrow on Twitter. It's going to be starting at 11 a.m. Pacific, which is 2 p.m. Eastern. If you're joining me on the West Coast, we have a big topic. I think you're going to enjoy it. This month is all about financial literacy month. So we have a whole bunch of really important financial literacy topics to share with it, all of you. So thank you so much for watching Level Up. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest content. And you can watch full episodes of Winnie Sun on Level Up Live, on NASDAQ, Amazon Fire, Samsung, and Roku. And of course, don't forget to check out Yes Factor with Winnie Sun on Apple Podcasts, which is through the LinkedIn Podcast Network. Thank you so much for your support, and I will see you again tomorrow. Take care now.